Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we are so uh, excited about the response that got. Senior Terrence is here. So we are excited about the response that we get. Uh, and so we are doing good. We're grateful. But last Wednesday night was a was a fantastic event. It really was. Uh, we did our initial. It was an intro. Intro session. In preparation for our five-part series that will start the first of June. Yes. So you should join us. You should join us. Last week, Greg and Linda, they were on and they said it was fantastic. Thank you all. Thank you. And we've gotten so many others who have uh, said the same thing. Said it so was we'll be pressing. talking about meaningful conversations. How do you have What do we talk about then? Conversation. No, no. In terms of the five parts, the areas. Oh, no. But let's talk about last week for a moment. What did we talk about last week in the intro session? Communication. We talked about communication and the biggest mistakes people make. It was 11 of them, weren't there? Mm -hmm. It was. It was good. Good. It was. We really don't want good. to go through all of them. No, 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 no. You, you can actually get that on the jollymarriage.com slash event site. And you can access that, that, uh, that first one and then sign up for all the whole series. So we're glad. Thank you all for joining on Instagram. Thank you for joining on, uh, let's see, Facebook. Thank you for joining on LinkedIn Live. Thank you all for all who have made this very popular around the world now. We, we are always amazed. The people who say we watch your message. We saw it. My son said it to us the other night. My son said, Dad, my friends say we are checking out your parents' online now these are millennials and we said what so let's keep them interested by getting right into the um well what are we going to talk about tonight what are we going to talk about tonight uh emotional affairs emotional affairs mm -hmm. and is an emotional affair is it really cheating really cheating so people are tuning in so we don't want to we want to get about. focused on that and if they have comments they can put it put it in your comments and in your your is it really thoughts, cheating? Is emotion. Well, let's talk about what it is first. Okay. I know you've done your research. Miss Research Girl has done the research. Okay. And, and so, I know that. So, well. oops, different pieces in terms of an affair versus what is an emotional affair. Okay, define. Okay, so Webster's Dictionary simply says an affair because all different kinds of nuances that an affair, an affair is an emotional relationship between two people who one or both of them are married. That's just a straight out simple definition. Oh, no, 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 no. You, uh, that's not what that says. It's not it says a sexual relationship. Sexual relationship. What did I say? Emotional? You said emotional. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a sexual, uh, an affair in its simplest form is a sexual relationship between two people who one or both of them are married, but not to each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. And then an emotional And then affair. an emotional affair is when you're investing a great amount. Now, I don't know what a great amount is. I don't know if that's 51% of your time, your, your whatever, where you invest a great amount of your time emotionally, your emotional energy with someone else who is not your spouse. Mm. And we'll get into what exactly does that look like? Mm. So you go from an affair, so you can say, well, I'm not having an affair because I'm not having sex. Right? Right. To, well, but you're investing time and sharing information. Quality time. And quality and information. information with somebody who is not your spouse. And you are not telling your spouse about the relationship. And you're, ah. you're actually taking that space or that asset of emotional um, involvement that would go to normally to your spouse and you're sharing with someone else. But why would it, why they, Why do you think they're sharing it with somebody else and not with the spouse? Because if past spouse perhaps but spurned them. Well, a lot of reasons why, but we just, right now we're just talking about what it is. The definition. Let's get a good and definition. And affair generally then is sex. A sexual relationship with somebody who's not your with spouse. somebody who, who's other than your spouse. We're trying to get to it short, this simple. And, okay. An emotional relationship is when you take some asset, emotional asset. You're investing that time and energy 
but not sex, not the physical act, but you're investing your time and your energy, your talking, your thinking. And even your intimacy, maybe. Because intimacy well, I don't is want, not I sex. Don't, I, don't, I don't want to use that word, though, because we can kind of, because intimacy can lead to sex. Yeah, but but you lead, you're taking some of your intimacy that you might give to your spouse and giving it In terms time. of time and attention. Yeah. Okay. And giving it to somebody okay. else. So why are we even talking about this? Well, it's, it's come up to our, come up on our plate. You know, we ask, invite y'all to send us emails with things you want us to discuss uh, at info at willyjolly.com. And we've, we've seen this. Uh, so Terrence says, is, is relationships, is it a relationship so easy that people have to make up foolish because they're both bored? Well, this is a make little... Up. Foolishness. foolishness. I don't. Terrence, explain. I don't know what that means. Make well, well, this is a little different because it's not about boredom. It's, it doesn't seem to be created by boredom. It seems to be created by a unfulfilled need. Mm. Okay, not sexual. Maybe not sexual need. Maybe. Maybe, but unfulfilled appreciation. Yeah, unfulfilled appreciation, unfulfilled um, a feeling of lack value, of, value, uh, uh, unvalued. Is yeah, that a word? No, unvalued, not, not valued. Uh, devalued or devalued, but not valued. I think that's the right word. You're not valued by your spouse. You don't believe that your spouse. You don't believe that your spouse values you as an individual as a, a there's some value spouse, issue right. there might be some um disrespect mm -hmm. that you're getting from someone else that's respectful yeah. and so your spouse might make you feel that they don't respect you right and then who doesn't want to be respected and appreciate it. That's right. And then it can become a very gradual thing. It's and before small you know it, changes. It's not physical sex, but somebody who is perhaps in awe of your conversation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in awe of who your, thinks that you're intellectually stimulated. Um, stimulated. Stimulate. Yes. Ah, intellectual and stimulation. Who has who seems to to glean pleasure. From your your company, where your spouse might not do that. Wow! And before you know it, you're in over your head, way over your head. And then the next part of the affair is that you hide it from your spouse. You the next part of the emotional affair, affair right? You're not having sex yet, no. or you don't have to have sex at all anywhere. I mean, not yet. You make it sound like it's leading to sex. An emotional it affair. Could. Invest emotional, most emotional support to a friend or someone outside of their marriage than they invest in their partner. Hmm. Ooh. But it doesn't start out that way. No, they usually start out what we would call plutonic. Now, when you look up the word plutonic, it is, it is by its definition, an intimate relationship between two people and uh, by intimate that there's a closeness a Reminis close friendship i wouldn't use the word intimate there because we're i don't using think intimacy yeah. i wouldn't either how we define intimacy i would say but it's not casual correct all right see a platonic relationship is a close a, a close, close friendship. friendship yeah a close friendship it's not a passing oh hi i know that person that's met them 10 years ago and i see him every 10 years that's casual but a platonic could be though somebody would say, "Well, that's all plutonic. I know them and just know them in passing. No, no big deal." Hmm. Okay, but when it gets to this next level, but a plutonic relationship can become an emotional relationship. Can become emotionally connected because of the amount of time, the kind of conversations, and how each other makes the other person feel and want and then, it need it appreciate and in this time of high tech low touch mm, mm. I'm again high tech low touch high tech low mm. touch you mm. can be more easily drawn into an emotional affair because you you got your phone 
You're texting. That's that the person. easiest thing. That's a very All day long. easy thing. You're sending an a emotional text. relationship. So you're not having you're you're not having the physical sex. How you but doing? But you can have that emotional relationship all day long. All day long. And what happens is it 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 it, it becomes a, a habit. You know, a habit is something that happens. Um, what's the old saying? That a habit is too hard to a habit is too hard to to break. It's like a chain that's too hard to break before it's too easy to release or something like that. Then it's easy to little by little it gets into your system. You're texting once a day, then twice a day, then good morning, how you doing? Now these are little things that don't seem big and and isolated, but when you start to see it in the fullness, it creates this emotional affair. And then you don't want your spouse to know about this special friend, special friend. And so what You're happens? getting emotional support from this person. Ooh, because right. they, they're feeling a need. Yeah. You're getting now, emotional support. Is it cheating or not? That's what the question is at hand. And that's what we we were brought. Up. Is an emotional affair really cheating? That was the question that, that we. That was the question that was asked of you. Yes, because you were actually working with. Yes. A and I do my research because see, I've never had that experience in my life with I my wife. I never tell the tale. <laughs> Uh, that's true. I have not had that personal experience. So it took me a while to figure it out. I had to do some research and really look at it. It's, it's, and in some circles, it's very controversial. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for the one who's committing the emotional. <laughs> now, Terrence says it's immature, but Terrence is more than that because what we've learned is that it's usually caused by some there's a trigger that created it. There's some action, you know, or every action is a result of, uh, of, a, of, a, of an action. It's usually a behavior on the part of the, of the spouse, of the other. Of the other spouse. And so whether it's being offended, whether it's being neglected, whether it's being un undervalued, that this person says, I'm not getting something at home. So I got this friend who I'm having a conversation with and, it just, and it's accidental. In many instances, it, 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 it didn't start out that way, but maybe the, the the husband or the wife maybe unknowingly has destroyed the self-esteem of their mate. Yeah, yeah. And because of lack of meaningful communication, because a lot of time, times you, you're talking but that doesn't really mean you're communicating, right? right? Right. You're talking, but you're not really communicating. That's what we're looking at with our, our series. What is meaningful communication? And sometimes people need some help. They need some help. They need a little bit of help. They need a little bit of help because they don't even know how to. What is meaningful communication? I was talking to him about so and so. Mm, that doesn't mean that it was actually registering and that you were actually speaking the same language. You know, you look mighty cute tonight. <laughs> Let's get back to the topic at hand. Oh, she turns me on. She turns me on. Oh, oh on. excuse me. Anyway, uh, Brina says, yes, you are keeping a special social part of yourself hidden from your spouse. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It's hidden. It's it's it, You're holding it back. You're not giving your all. Well, it might have been there and it got bruised. Mm, mm, that's right. Brina, it got that's bruised. Right. Uh, so Terrence says it's time for therapy. And beyond therapy, uh, Terrence, it's time for for um, being honest. You know, communication. It goes well, back. Well, you to can't, that. Terrence. You can't get to therapy until you admit that there's a problem. You must admit that there's a problem. And if two people, in the case of okay, the couple that mm -hmm. that that you are advising. One says, "I'm I'm not cheating. That's that's the issue." Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So what? So what really does that mean? We've already said it. You're holding a part of yourself back, but it, but until he's willing to admit that, how are you gonna? And it's they damaging. Eventually, can go to therapy. 
And it is damaging to the relationship, is damaging damaging to the other partner. And there then trust can be destroyed just like in a, a regular affair, um, you know, a sexual affair. And so what regardless whatever leads to the partner to pursue an emotional affair, the impacts on the relationship can be very devastating. Even though it's not physical. And that's the thing that I had to I had to process was, well, it's not physical, it's not sexual, it's just a friend, but then you are hiding. Woo! Okay, so let me give... When you get to hiding from your spouse, let me give you a... Hold on, let me... If my phone was to ring, Mm -hmm. and I'm here, and the phone is in front of you, I went to, I went to the car, Mm -hmm. and the person's name would come up on the phone. Mm -hmm. Would you answer it? Sure. Yeah. Of course you would, because we don't have anything we're hiding from each other. But I think, but I, I don't. Maybe that's not the real question, now. I would answer your phone anyway. What do you mean anyway? I, I'm saying would you answer? It? I would just answer your phone. Yes, you would answer because 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 it's being it's being helpful and but right you would be you wouldn't be concerned that I was there was some. Something going suspicious. On. Yes. No. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and that's, that's just the nature of our relationship. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to get that point across to people. That that's how our relationship is built. Great quote today. Great quote. I was talking to a dear friend, and I told her about a family member, a very close family member. I might as well be straight up my son, who who, you know, we love our son. He's a great guy. Um, but he's been on the brink of marriage a number of times. And I said that one of his statements was, I'm looking for somebody who I can love like you love mom. And my friend Karen Casey said, you have to tell him that this is the result of the work we've done. Mm. This love didn't happen from the get go. I think we love each other more now. I have a greater appreciation now than I did 40 years ago. 40. Did you hear that? 40. <laughs> 40. <laughs> and I the was, more we're huh. out, I it just, and the more we're out and about, and the more we talk to people and, and, and hear about their situations and, try to give them some insight, the more appreciative I am of the lack of drama that we have oh my God. and the effort of working to understand each other. And it really is a two-way street. Lack each of drama is a big deal, baby. has to work at understanding the other person. Then the other person has to be open enough to say, again, communication. I, I'm telling you, folks, this lack of drama thing is big. I tell my son often, you see drama once, you're going to see it again. So be mindful of that. And so I'm saying to, if you have this emotional issue, then how do you fix it? Well, there are a couple of things. Emotional fear. fear. I, are you going to get to fixing it before I, I think they need to have the sign. All right. Okay. Okay. Go give them It'll the sign. It'll at least make you stop and think because we've touched on it. So let's get it organized. Let's get so it. So here's some signs of emotional cheating. So we're not talking about having sex, but we're but we're talking about the closeness and the sharing of information that you would not sh- that you're not sharing with with your mate. Right. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. Anticipating alone time or communicating with your special friend. You look. You're looking forward to it. Mm. As opposed to looking forward to let's get in the bed and snuggle together. Let me tell you about my dad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're looking forward to spending that time. Uh, and, and maybe it's just via text with your friend. Right. Beliefs that your friend understands you better than your spouse. Ooh. We get that a lot. We get that. Yep. 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 Or yep. doesn't talk to me. My friend doesn't talk to me in an insulting way. Like my spouse does. Or nag or me. Or be demeaning. Or, or nag, as I said. Mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm. Or, or, or when they're angry, my friend doesn't stonewall with me or give me the silent treatment. Okay. Decreasing time with your spouse. You're spending less and less time with your spouse. 
And, and, and let me tell you, not only are you spending less time, you're spending less focus. Boom. You, you know, when I, 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 we know if you're working every day, you got a couple hours, a morning hour, a few hours in the evening, maybe, but it's, it's the focus during that time. That's why we, we say to everybody how important it is to be intentional about having a date night. Not just saying, oh, so well, decreasing we went. decreasing focus time with your spouse. There you go. Okay. I inserted that word. I thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, keeping your friendship a secret. That's that's a major thing. Keep, oh, that's if you a don't one. have anything to hide, why do you have a friend, a special friend, and your spouse doesn't know about it? And hide them. And hide your conversations. There's something going on emotionally that you feel. Oh, and you know this is not up and up. Okay. So that's why you're hiding it. Right. Okay. And then a lack of interest in intimacy with your spouse. Did the sex shut down? Just about. Mm. Maybe. Ooh. And now you're well, not you're having not, sex. You're not, you're not interested. Ooh. Because you're probably fantasizing about your friend. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Daydreaming about your friend. Mm. If, you, if you're daydreaming about somebody, you don't you don't necessarily. Want I to told my wife about. this is the truth. <laughs> I told my wife when I was single, I had I had dreams of uh, you know sexual exploits with these you know these you know Jai Jaka boy. I don't know who it was. You know, boom boom bam bam. I don't have any. When I have sex now, when I have dreams about sex in my dream now, I don't have dreams having sex with her. <laughs> Isn't that odd? But that's how. I that's think that's a wonderful thing. I only want to have dreams about have my fantasies are always with her in it. Where are we going to fantasize? Ooh. Isn't that wonderful? That's the truth. Okay, sharing feelings and your problems with your special friend mm. and not with your and spouse. not with your spouse. That's the main mm. thing. Talking about the day to day activities, the things that are intimate, the things that are that are close to you. Not with your spouse. And when they confront you, which is exactly what happened when you were mm. talking to them, he says, we're just friends. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. But they hid it. He hid it for a while. He yeah, Terrence said when a third party enters, it's already trouble. But see, it's not just a third party, Terrence, but they said they're just friends. You got lots of friends who are in your life, but... Uh, it, it when it become more, it's that level of it, it's emotional, emotional a, it's kind of, it's an emotional attachment yeah more than, they're feeling a need that should have been filled by your spouse yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's that's when it gets starts to get God gets a little just curious why do people hurt the ones they love is it to correct an un, undesirable behavior or a form of self control selfish control? Stonewalling. Why do people do that? Because they don't understand the importance of power of communication. And the reason they do it is because no one's told them this is not going to help it's you. It's not going to end well. It's they not going to end well. So no one told them. They, they need to learn. And maybe that behavior is something that they've oh, acquired I from. Yep. That's exactly. okay. you, you, from television. Uh, we got chapter number five in the book. If you get check the book, chapter number five, leave the drama with your mama. And what we say in chapter number five and leave the drama with your mama is many people are getting their cues on how to have a great, uh, uh, not a great relationship, how to have a relationship from reality television shows where it's their job to create drama and, you know, pulling out stuff and and i'm pulling out the but you know what the, they, uh, they, they, the, the the go tablecloths and dark they get to go home yeah it is hard to sustain that level of chaos oh i know i know but i'm saying people see that and they think oh that's how that's why we're encouraging people to get the books Get the book. Get two copies of the book. Get one for you and one for your significant other. But here it, it is laid out for you, okay? And that's why people do it. They hurt people they love because they don't know how to how to take care of people they love because they get the wrong cues, even from their parents or from television or from stupid stuff, okay? Get make and love, so, make money, make so it last. They think that this is how I will effectively 
manage. Sometimes it's manage. Uh, manage. So I don't want to. I don't want to use. Sometimes it's manipulation. Manipulation. Yeah. Because you see a lot of that on television. I right. You watch a lot, but right. that's what's out there, mm. and it's entertaining, and so it grabs your attention. And before you know it, and if you're not reading and doing research, or and in, in the average, what is it after after college you don't read a book? Most people, average don't. person, does not read another book after their last year of formal so, education. So you don't need to read a book; you can get the video. But the point is, you need to be around people who see relationship building as important. That's part of that legacy that you will leave for the next generation and you can learn how to do it effectively because you don't want to have high blood pressure great marriages help to maintain healthy people right the, the, the statistics show that so you have to if, and if you don't know how to do it you can learn now how we, we're almost over and we haven't gotten to how, what the uh, remedies are okay let's get don't one. want to create distance you got you to gotta create distance between okay, you. Okay, the remedy of how to get, how to stop. Get past the this emotional, emotional affair. affair. Get distance from that person. Next, be honest. Wait, with now that's hard. How are you going to get You got to shut from? it down. But shut it down. An emotional need. Shut it down. Do you want to fix it? You got to shut it down. I don't know. I don't know if I want to fix it because my spouse, yeah, keep it real, because my spouse is not fulfilling my needs and hollering and screaming and everything because they're upset because they think because because okay so i did lie i did i, I did, did lie i did lie they, I, did, I, did, I, did, I did i did so so but they're not being sweet and kind to me and you're telling me to shut it down well, that's with what I'm somebody telling you. who makes me feel good about myself that's what, what I'm you telling, gonna do? I'm what, what, what are you gonna do? I'm telling them to shut it down. That's the first thing. You gotta you gotta create distance. But I'm saying uh, that's I, difficult. I know it, and no, no one said it's gonna be easy. Number two, you gotta be honest with your partner. Now, this is not gonna be easy because that's less easy than the other one. Yeah, it's hard, <laughs> it's harder than the other one to tell your spouse what's been going on and and be honest about it and then. Then, the, then it gets even deeper, harder. Discuss your relationship problems with your spouse. Well, you probably won't get to do that because your spouse is hollering, screaming, and mad and pissed off because now they've discovered that, that you've had an emotional affair all the time with the other person and they didn't tell and, and you didn't tell them. And then <laughs> how do you rekindle the sexual part of your marriage when you had shut that down? Because you didn't have no feelings. We're well, having fantasies with the French. There the friend, you go. Because a friend makes you feel valued. Yeah. So we're talking about now trust. So he, this is what they say do. You have to maybe slowly do it. Um, rub their back. Hold their hand. Well, you've um, got to Kiss do them it. on the neck. So here's the thing. So some of this you're talking about, you're going to have to do it because you're not feeling it. You, you're going to have to do it and become mechanical. I'm just... Well, you, I, I'm not you, you got to you got to work on it little by little. Yeah, because they lie. They have they 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 they're having an affair. Now this is how the they're having an affair. You want me to be nice? Which person? The, okay, the person who had the husband had the affair. Yeah, he he had uh -huh. the affair and he did not tell his wife the truth, or she thought that this friendship was over. He lied about. It. Okay, am I not right? Yes, he, yes, he, yes. He, he did lie about it. Yes. Nan's all out. That's out. Now, in her mind, it doesn't matter the fact that she had offended him and all these other things, right? That drove him. Well, there are things right. that created this. Yes. Uh, there was a definite creation. Yes. Okay. So um, how do you fix it? They, now they, Terrence. Every action has an equal need, and opposite need reaction. Therapy. Yeah. Every action has opposite or equal or opposite or greater reaction. Mm -hmm. Well, this was a reaction to a a slight an embarrassment. Now that how it happened. Now and that's how it. So you got to decrease. Snowball. You got to you got to separate. You got to be honest, and then separate you gotta, from the special friend. Right. Then be honest with the spouse and tell the truth, and then ask for forgiveness. Mm. Ask for forgiveness, and then forgive does not mean forget. No, it does not. And then start rekindling 
your sexual activity as a couple? That's hard because everything's hard. You keep telling me it's hard. <laughs> like, like I, uh, yeah, that's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Okay, so I'm mad at you. You didn't tell me the truth. You out there talking to somebody else and spending hours and laughing and everything. And you're not doing it with me. And you, obviously you're not finding me attractive anymore. Now I'm supposed to have sex with you? Are you you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I reckon, I reckon, I reckon. So where do we start? <laughs> Terry said my therapist is on free speed now before he gets married. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, these are the points. It is, so let's get back. Is having an emotional affair a form of cheating? Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. Yes. Now. And you need some help. And you need some help. And we want to make sure you get some help. How do you do it? communication, being open and honest. And, and we're going to work at meaningful communication. communication. That's part of the upcoming relationship repair series. That starts in June 1. June 1. So We've June got 1. people already signing up. Signing up. We are so excited. People are signing up for the full and series. So how do they sign up? Jollymarriage.com slash events. E-V-E-N-T-S. Do it today. You'll be Jolly Marriage dot com slash events do it now and you'll get the intro section as part of that which was fabulous uh, thank you again greg and linda Cazera for saying how much you enjoyed it we have had so many people who said it was phenomenal we're over time okay i'm making sure they know how to do it and i want them to get this this yes, will sir. help them because that people need help they need help and then i want you to Say go again jollymarriage.com slash events yes okay. go do that and then while you're at jollymarriage.com get the bundle we had a couple people get the bundle this week two books two workbooks an audio book and a cd seminar do that invest in your marriage invest in your relationship and invest in your future together all right emotion affairs are dangerous some people have lost their lives that's right Ooh. that's right so look for well, we want to welcome everybody. Thank you again. We want to thank you, not just for joining us, Aww. but what you have done. You, 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 you have made this a popular online program. You. And people are now viewing it all share over the us, world. Share that's all. Just share it with your friends, your family members. Thank you for your sharing it. Because so many people said, my friend told me about it. They said, we needed it, and they told us about it. Do that if you know share somebody. Share with someone that you love. That's right. A couple you know, share with them. Yes. Terrence's five star broadcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Terrence. Thank you. Thank you all. Good evening. Have a great evening. Have a great uh, week. And anything special coming up this week for us? Oh, it's Memorial it's Day. It's Memorial Weekend. Yeah, Memorial Day weekend. And your nephew's getting married. My nephew's so getting married. Wedding. Yay. Oh, I spoke for Toastmasters. Want to say greetings to all the Toastmasters uh, for the, for the, the, the 36, uh, Region 36. Uh, I District. Guess, District 36. At their 75th anniversary or whatever. But I, I told them, here's In what person. Happened. I was going to do it virtual. I said I would do it, but I would do it only virtually. And then something spoke in my heart, and I showed up. I just showed up. They were ecstatic. So I had a great time. And I love people. So, you know, it was great. Okay, look, we got to go. Thank y'all. Jolly out. Have a good evening. God bless. Thank you. It's good to hear, Terrence. That's great to hear. God bless everybody. Good evening. Good night. Let's go out you. on our Thank music. You. Here we go out on our music. Oh, where's my music? Where's, there it is. Bam. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you.